All right, what's going on, boys and girls? This is not going to be your typical video. This is not going to be your typical reaction video you guys might expect from me. This one is why I switched to Linux from Windows. And I really wanted to kind of dive into some more of these videos because I'm seeing more and more of these videos pop up here on YouTube. And I find the reasons people switch operating systems to always be interesting because it's never the same as something that I might come up with or you come up with. It's always going to be their own personal reasons. And once you, it gives you a different mindset and a different way to look at things. And that to me is really, really cool because it kind of changes the way you can present stuff to people who are potentially looking to make that switch as well, but you just don't have the right maybe argument or the right way of presenting it. And this can help with that. This can expand on that thought process and that argument of why somebody may or may not be able to switch to Linux. So you're not going to get a lot of the swear and you're going to get a lot of that stuff. I don't think with a lot of these videos, unless there's a, these are just full of dumb, but I highly doubt it. So let's get into why homie here says he switched to Linux from windows. What's up guys. This is super Kyle three and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over my custom Linux distribution, why I use it and why I have switched my workflow over from windows to Linux for the most part. Now we're going to jump on the computer so we can take a look at my custom Linux distribution. All right, everyone. So here we are at my custom Linux distribution, and I'm going to show you around and give you some a tour pretty much of my distribution and why I chose this, why I have it configured the way I have it configured and how much of my workflow have has moved from Windows to Linux and why I moved it from Windows to Linux. So right off the bat, you can see I have the KDE desktop. Um, I've customized it a little bit with Latte Doc down here with to have my applications on. I have a Mac OS icon theme and my. So first up, <laughs> I'll give you props on the, uh, the selection of KDE Plasma. Nice choice. Uh, definitely, definitely always enjoy seeing people run Plasma. Uh, most people tend to run away from it because they, a lot of options can get thrown in your face. I can tell by the fact that you're running console that you're not afraid of this the CLI or the command line or batch or you know whatever terminal you want to an app within terminal you want to use. So that's cool. Latte Doc, also cool. Um, I'm I'm more of a default panel guy, but that's just me to each their own. So it's cool that where I'm seeing this go already. Okay. Console as the terminal. ZSH is my terminal emulator thing. Um, I really like ZSH. I like it a bit better than Bash, just the way it looks. I have oh my ZSH installed with the Robbie Russell theme for the little terminal prompt. And in the bar up here, you can see I have a global menu. I have my applications menu, which is a full screen applications menu, and just a little system tray, etc. I have the Nord theme, Nordic for the Plasma theme and the console theme. So as far as themes, the nice thing with Plasma is you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want with them. Personally, for me, I would. You're going for more of a Mac OS vibe, which I, I get the like the global menus and that kind of stuff. I understand where you're going with that. For me, I would always. Be, then this is more because I was a Unity user for a long time. Um, I ended up customizing Plasma so that everything goes to the left. So like. Like you have with the minimize, maximize, all that stuff. All that stuff is on the left. The generic panel that comes with Plasma is what I use. I use a menu called Kiki Q for me personally. Um, it's just the more of a structure way and the way it can be customized. And the theme that I generically use is either Arc Darker or Arc Darkest as far as my personal flavors, just because I really enjoy those. As far as icon packs, I believe the one I'm currently running, there's two that I use. One's called Obsidian, which is not a minimalist flat design like a lot of the, the current stuff. And the other one that's a minimal but very colorful design, I believe it is called Sweet or Candy or Sweet Candy. Sweet candy. I can't remember the exact name, but it, it has a lot of more of the esoteric uh, applications that i would use for like video editing and stuff so just i love the fact that you're just running into this full bore that's, that's awesome i've just been really getting into the nord theme lately and nordic is pretty much nord but it's just the um 
cohesive plasma package for that so I've been using that lately um, I really like it I like the wallpaper that comes with it which is the one you can see right here I'm starting to really appreciate the aesthetic of Mac OS in a way I mean I have my Linux th distribution themed a bit differently but overall it's a lot like Mac OS I have the um, little buttons for this on the left side and I have the global menu up here along with the icons down below and the icons are similar to Mac OS icons now the reason I have the global menu especially up here the one of the big reasons for it is I like how minimalistic the actual desktop interface is of any application that you're using whenever you have the global menu up there because it's just up here um, instead of having file edit view bookmark settings help up here it's just all up there really nice and clean helps keep things a bit cleaner when I'm using it and kind of declutters my area um, so yeah that's pretty much the main tour that all this is running on Manjaro which is an arch based distribution I know a lot of people be like oh no you should just use plain stock arch and I get what you're saying I've used plain stock arch before for a very long time probably a, about a year now in fact and I really enjoy it but I switched over to Manjaro just because of the ease of install on my different machines and some of the tools that come bundled with it so as you can see right here we have some things like the hardware configuration utility it makes it really easy to see what drivers I have installed for my Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card as well as for my video card which is the GeForce GTX 1066 gigabyte card by NVIDIA also there's the kernel utility which allows me to quickly switch between kernels a few other things like keyboard settings, locale, time and date, user accounts, etc. So it just makes it really easy to switch between everything. Um, and it get, offers a bit more sort of customization, even though I don't have, um, even though it is Manjaro, so it's using some of Manjaro's packages. I've also added the Black Arch repository. So if we do sudo, sudo pacman sy, put my password in. You can see that I have the core extra community and multi repositories, and then also the Black Arch repository added. Black Arch has about 20,000 different pen testing tools, so I really like to use that for penetration testing as I can just do sudo pacman s, whatever tool name I need, and it's probably in there. And if not, I can just go get it off GitHub, but most of the time it is in there um, just because they have so many tools. Also, their community is really friendly. about answering questions that you might have or any errors that come up along the way. They do recommend not to use Manjaro and to use it with Arch, um, but I found it to work fine with Manjaro so far and so I've stuck with that. Some plan Now, uh, I'm gonna, probably, this is speculation on my part, I'm gonna speculate that they probably don't recommend Manjaro because Manjaro holds stuff back. That's where his packages. That's just me spitballing here, but that would be probably why. So it could potentially run into conflicts. Um, that that's just my probably observation on that. But overall, I got no problems with what you what you're doing, what you're using. I mean, Linux is all about choice. I like people who exercise that fucking choice. It's great. So, as an example for me personally, again. You're a Manjaro, so you're on an arch base. I'm running an arch, arch base, straight arch, call it whatever you want. One called Salient OS is what I use. You know, if somebody wants to use a Ubuntu or OpenSUSE, go ahead. So it's just cool seeing how other people and what other people use Linux for for themselves and why they make those switches. Which that's the more of the part I'm interested in, but it is cool to see other people's kind of workflow and desktops and that kind of stuff. As in the future, terminal prompt, Tmux for that. Use Manjaro and to use it with Arch, um, but I found it to work fine with Manjaro so far, and so I've stuck with that. Some plans in the future that I plan to expand on. I've used i3 Window Manager, the Tiling Window Manager, one of the most popular ones in the past for a good while, and I really like it. And in the future, I plan to expand and have that also on my system. I just don't use it currently as I find using KDE Plasma. It's just as enjoyable. And the only time I really need t the tiling feature of i3 is whenever I have to um, tile my terminal, and I can use Tmux for that. So it's not really too much of an issue not using i3, although I did really enjoy it when I did use it. So now I'm pretty much done showing you guys around. 
DOS geek would be proud of the filling the brain with knowledge. <laughs> uh, no, T T Mux is an interesting choice. And we, again, this is more about I enjoy seeing what people use. It's not so much of a, a, a shit on kind of video. These are not going to be a lot of those kind of videos. So if you guys are here for that, eh, sorry, it's not going to be generically what these videos are for. These are more uh, of a palate cleanser for the the dumb videos that I rant and rave and get ulcers for. So I'm waiting to see what what his uh, the reasons he switched. So that's really what I care about. So let's hopefully he gets into that. My distribution now i'm gonna hop on over back to the main camera and talk to you guys about why i switched my workflow over from windows to linux all right everyone so now that you've seen my um the computer side of things and what i've actually done with my linux distribution i'm going to cover why exactly i chose to move most of my workflow from windows to linux so first before i cover exactly the reason why i'm going to let you guys know what parts of my workflow i moved from windows to linux the main part of my workflow that I really have left on Windows is editing. Now I edit with DaVinci Resolve, which can be used on Linux. Um, it's recommended to use it with CentOS or Red Hat, but it can be used with Arch Linux and there's actually a package in the AUR that makes it really easy to use with Arch Linux. I haven't tried that on this distribution yet and I'll let you guys know how that turns out on my Twitter at SuperTal3. Also I post updates to the channel rather frequently there so go follow me on Twitter at SuperTal3 for updates and when I'm posting videos and maybe some hints as to what they're going to be about or just other things that are going on. The part of my workflow that I did move over is pretty much all of the programming and hacking portions of my work. Now I pretty much hacked only on Linux exclusively I never really used Windows or Windows subsystem for Linux as it, it wasn't really compatible before with the open VPN required for hack the box I just it didn't work very well with it and it works a lot better on native Linux also I'm not a huge fan of running everything in VMs I just don't like that I'd rather run it on natively on the hardware I just enjoy it a bit better that way even though my machine is really great for running VMs because it has 12 cores or 16 threads and 64 gigs of RAM etc but that also means that my native Linux is never going to run out of RAM or anything like that now the main reason that I moved a lot of my stuff over from Windows to Linux is because yesterday I was going to start coding for this video that I plan to make for you guys soon can't exactly say what it's about but it's using Python so stay tuned for that um, in fact, that's a really good reason to subscribe to the channel. Hit the red subscribe and button and hit the notifications bell icon so that you're notified when I post that video. It's probably not going to be the next video, but it's going to be probably the one after that. Um, because the next video, I also have a special certification review for you guys coming up. I got to take the Azure Administrator AZ-104 certification this Wednesday, so I'm going to make a video about that so that way you guys can know what it's all about but anyway back to the point yesterday I was going to make a Python project on Windows and a whole bunch of errors kept coming up and Python just wouldn't work so I was like okay it's been a long time since I've reset my computer I might as well go ahead and do that there's no real files that I need on here besides videos so I exported those off to another hard drive and reset Windows now when I get back on Windows I install Python and then I go to install a package which is CMake and Dlib I needed those um, use pip to install those and right off the bat it says oh you need a Visual Studio C++ build tools so I was like okay no problem I'll go download Visual Studio even though I only really want to use Visual Studio code so I head over to visualstudio.microsoft.com and click download and then it just sits there and doesn't do anything and finally after like a whole minute the download thing pops up in the bottom of my web browser and it downloads very slowly I might add probably took another two minutes to download and mind you this is on a one gigabit per second internet connection um, down and up so it should be really really fast for me now Microsoft could have just been having a bad day but this certainly still influenced my choice of Windows versus Linux so once I launched the Visual Studio installer this actually downloads some more stuff and it was downloading in the kilobits per second and I was like, this is pretty much unacceptable. So I left it there for a really long time and it still didn't finish. I was like, okay, I'm just moving everything to Linux. And I switched over to Linux, did a quick sudo padman s just to make sure Python was installed properly. Pip, install, CMake, dlib, everything just worked. 
Now I know that's a common phrase that everybody doesn't like, especially about Mac OS. It just works, but it did. It worked seamlessly. And I was able to get to developing in about five minutes instead of spending an hour getting everything working like I was spending on Windows and still didn't get everything done. Also, utilities like Docker, which I'm starting to experiment with, and Kubernetes work a whole lot better on Linux. And so I just really prefer using Linux for those applications. And now pretty much everything I do, save video editing, runs best on Linux. So that's the main reason why I've switched over to Linux. I use Linux now. Mantero Linux with KDE Desktop, the configuration I just showed you guys on my main desktop computer, although I dual boot that with Windows for editing and gaming purposes, although I don't game all that much, honestly. And on my HP laptop, I have that set up. Um, that is just a single boot into Linux because it has everything I need, like I said before. There's no need to use Windows on there. So anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. So here's the thing, and this is kind of the cool thing. This is why I wanted to start doing some of these more videos. Now, you guys aren't going to hear a lot from me, but I, the thing that I find interesting is the willingness and <laughs> ironically the frustration because you always hear about these stories about Oh, Linux is so frustrating and yada, yada, yada. Yet, <laughs> this uh, this guy here was so frustrated with Windows that he literally nuked and paved an entire machine <laughs> to go with Linux that gave him less headaches. Now, I'm not saying Linux is for everybody as far as the right fit. But th uh, that is kind of telling on where Microsoft's as has their OS at. The more they develop it, the more they end up actually frustrating people, updates and everything else. And a lot of really jank things that Windows does, even in gaming. For those that think that, oh, I can play any game in Windows. Yeah, I go play Drakken Song, River of Time. Good luck. Have fun DLL hunting. Fallout New Vegas. Don't, don't pull the, it just works for gaming. So really, at the end of the day, though, what I like about the his particular take is it didn't fit. Windows wasn't doing it. He was frustrated with it. it he was tired of it. It didn't fit his needs and what he needed. So he found something that did. He found the right tool for the job. And that's totally cool. That is awesome. That is amazing. Find the tool that fits for you. If there's some flavor of Linux, newbie friendly or not, go use it. If that's the right tool for you. If you can make it the right tool for you, if you can build the tool for yourself, hell, why not? Go do it. That's the power of open source Linux, you know, as a whole. You can generically make it do whatever the hell you want. Here's the metal. Make the fucking tool if you need to. That's the power that you're given with that. It's your choice whether or not you buy, you go and use the pre-made tools or not. You know, do, do I buy the pre-made wrench or do I go and die cast the wrench myself? Really, at the end of the day, that is cool. I enjoy seeing these videos and I enjoy seeing the different reasons people switch. For him, frustration of the nonsense that he was running into with windows. So he jumped nothing wrong with that props to you. I know this video is a couple months old, but I'm hoping that it, you're, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that you were able to get DaVinci resolve rocking for you. Um, you know, for some people, video editing is a sore spot and others. It isn't depends on what you do, but you guys know what to do, write it, subscribe, peace, catch you on the flip.